Welcome into Between the Pylons. I'm John Camacho. And this is Jacob Waters. And guys, we have an absolutely <clears throat> awesome show for you guys today. Uh, just switching it up a little bit. Um, you know, usually we, we talk a lot of NFL, uh, but this week we want to talk college a lot. So we're going to go through the games at the end of the show uh, and all the big games in college football. We're going to do a 10 pick mock all right so we we did it ahead of time we went back and forth on one mock draft kind of had some conversations uh so that's kind of still another like college bringing that in yeah. really what we want to do is we want to talk about some of the top picks some of the top names if you stick with us in between the pylons we are going to go in depth in the nfl draft throughout the draft process we are both huge draft fans especially i mean you know we're both huge draft fans yeah, of um I, I do draft profiles on on the between the pylons youtube channel if you're not subscribed please check that out um so all of that is going to be coming. But this week, this is like our first uh, we're dipping our toe into the college into the NFL draft. Right. That's going to be awesome. And uh, yeah, we, we got a great show. Uh, we're going to talk about some Bovada Sportsbook odds when it comes to the first pick in the draft and, and things like that. We're really excited to get into all that. So so let's get going. And uh, before we talk about all of that, uh, if you have stuck with us at Between the Pylons, you know, one thing above all else. That my 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 great partner, my esteemed colleague, thank you, Jacob Waters, is a <clears throat> diehard Auburn fan, War damn and it. has always has always supported uh, Gus Malzahn. And if you don't know where I'm going with this, you have lived under a rock because Gus Malzahn was let go as the Auburn head coach. And, and I know you have a lot on this. We've talked yeah. about this. And I'm going to let you just run with it real quick before I let you do that. I just want to say, from an outsider's perspective, somebody who's not a attached to, to the franchise or, or anything along those lines. I, I'm shocked that he gets fired in a, a COVID year uh, when he had an all SEC uh, opponents. And I mean, that just makes no, absolutely no sense to me. And having a six and four record. Yeah, it wasn't great, but you lost to Auburn or excuse me, you lost to Alabama, Georgia, A&M. A&M. A&M it's all three good ones. And the bad one was, was South Carolina. You had one <laughs> bad loss, really. Um, I, that's all I wanted to say. I'm going to let you run with it. Um, I'll start with the bad and I'll work my way up to the, the positive reality. Cause that's mm -hmm. where I always try to get myself. Yeah. But man, I'm not even going to try to lie to anyone out there. I was hurt. Um, Auburn fans, anyone who's paid attention to any social media knows the scrutiny that Gus Malzahn has been under for probably mm -hmm. the past four years. I would say the man has been coaching for his job year in, year out for one. I don't think that's fair to him. I think he has done a phenomenal job in his eight years at Auburn. He's given me some of the best football moments I've ever had in my life. Um, being with the team in 2010, he ran the offense with the team that had Cam Newton and won the BCS National Championship to taking us back to one in 2013 where we lost to FSU, unfortunately. It was a miraculous Go season. Knowles. Yeah, you got that one on us. We got the kick six, the the, <laughs> the, the immaculate de defection. Exactly. Thing. Yeah. So, so many different plays, memories that came from that. 2017, he won the SEC, and we were a, a hurt carry on Johnson away from beating Georgia in that championship game, because mm -hmm. I, I truly believe that's what would have happened there. You know, the past few seasons, yeah, it's, it's been disappointing um, here and there. There's one thing that I always go back to, and this is the man that can beat Nick Saban. Mm -hmm. There are very few in the country who can say that. Being in the same state as Nick Saban, I don't think Gus gets enough credit for that. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, we are living in one of the greatest dynasties we have ever seen across all sports, mm -hmm. let alone when you just look at the small area that's college football the greatest mountain that will never be moved from Bama. They are year in, year out, number one recruiting, number one in the state, just all in, in the same SEC West division. And to think that Gus is able to go through that man, uh, one of the only ones, that's why he got paid after that 2017 season. There's a reason that he was the fifth highest paid coach in, in the nation for that. I understand downward trend. I'm going to start to work towards the better end of this. Wasn't able to develop Bo Nix, it looks like. Bo Nix, promising five-star, number two quarterback in the overall class. Hasn't taken steps in the right yeah, direction. Yeah, wish. look, and I know where you're going with this. I, I think that's unfair. I think that's an unfair criticism. Well, he, he never got for, the offseason. For, yeah, for COVID year. He had he had freshman year, where, which <laughs> you can say what you want about Bo Nix. So I'm not, not going to defend Bo Nix uh, for how he played his freshman year. But I'm also going to say, like, there were moments where it was like, oh, shit, this dude could be special. Yeah. Like, there were at least those moments. This year, he didn't progress. Okay, sure. When the fuck was he supposed to? I mean, yeah. you know, he, he was COVID year. A lot of shit was fucked up. I'm sorry. I'll let no, you no, know. you're good. I, I've I defended a lot of gut because it felt like 90 percent of the Auburn fan base wanted Gus gone for a long time. Yeah. And now I will speak directly to you. Ninety percent. The man had 10 win seasons. The man won the SEC West with the greatest mountain of football in Alabama that we've ever seen. He got through that. 
not once, but twice in his time at Auburn. I don't know what bar you're setting for that next coach, but I'll let you know I'm watching. Mm -hmm. I'm seriously watching because to look at what UT did getting rid of Philip Fulmer, I promise you they do whatever they could to get that man back in there and go and avoid those 10, 12 years of absolute just travesty that they're going through right now. And they're still not out of it. Do you not realize that by taking a man who was doing a good to great job away, what you were opening up, you had to pay the man $21 million. So I hope the people on campus are ready to fork that money out. Big boosters have fun. I want to see where we're going to go forward because you do not fire a man after all that he's done. Yes. It's like a longtime girlfriend. It right now, it wasn't going good. And eventually there was a time to split. I understand that the offense wasn't clicking. There's times to move apart, but if you pay a $21 million buyout, which is the third highest in history, you better have a man lined up. And right now off the top of my head, the candidates, none of them say, damn, that's better than Gus Malzahn immediately. And I, I'm going to sit here and say right now, if I am the top candidate in college football, right, I, I get my choice of any open job. I'm not looking to play Nick Saban every fucking year. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not looking to play in the hardest conference in college. To have to recruit every, in the same state as that man? Recruit in the same state. Okay, you have to play Nick Saban. Hey, ho- hopefully you can you can have a good record against against him. Okay, if you beat him, you still have to go through Georgia. You still have to play LSU a bunch. You still have to play all of these heavyweight fucking teams every single year. And guess what? Auburn has been a part of that. Yes. All, every LSU fan that had to fucking play Auburn has been worried about Auburn for the past seven or eight years. Every Georgia fan is worried about Georgia or is worried about Auburn when it when it comes. And shit, every Alabama fan, our, one of our good friends, Michael Corkin, fucking has to see Alabama. He's not excited about that game. And it, he's excited about the game. He's not excited about the game in the sense that he knows that they're going to crush. Like it, it, Alabama fans were scared of Auburn. Every single team. I'm not saying Auburn was the greatest fucking team in the world. I, and I, I understand the naysayers towards uh, Gus Malzahn, but just the absolute ridiculousness uh, of saying that really fucking good competitive every single season isn't good enough. Man, I don't know what you want. I'm a, and that's where I lose it. Yes. I'm an LSU. I'm an FSU fan. You know, I I bust your balls all the yeah. time uh, for, for you know that championship win. That was a great year, and I thought we had another ten to twenty years of Jeff Fisher and being at the top of the ACC and being competitive every single season, having a chance to get into the playoffs every single season, and then it was taken away from me. And I don't know when when if ever FSU is going to get back to that. And it was a different situation. Obviously, Fisher wasn't fired. He moved on uh, to what he considered a better job. It, it is what it is. But, man, I, I can tell you, being where you've been, knowing every single game, it's going to be a fight. It's going to be a it's going to be a dog fight. But you are in every single game. You are competitive in every single game versus, I mean, shit, I wasn't sure we were going to be Duke this year. You know, yeah. and we almost no, did. It's a scary this road going sucks. forward just because you have to look at the guy that's going to inherit that job and know, okay, like you said, okay, I got to beat Bama. Gus was four and four with him in eight years on his time. That wasn't good enough. Okay, that's fine. Well, I got to get some away wins at Georgia LSU. That's where Gus really struggled when you look at his resume. He wasn't able to win. He's 0 and four at the away games. But then that every other year where Auburn's schedule lines up and we get to we get to take two of the three big dogs at home. That's where Gus was really able to be productive. And I get you don't have the national holding the trophy hopes in that, but Alabama has set such a high standard of perfection. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to be okay with not hitting that. Let's be honest. There's only been seven teams that have made the playoff since the playoff has opened up. Mm -hmm. It's not like there's just random Big Ten teams, random, you know, Big 12, Pac-12 hopping up in there all the time. It's an honor to be in there. And there's a group that's up there for a reason because they have the continuity and their system is set up to perfection. Auburn, we were going in a good direction, not a great direction, a good direction. And now we have just jeopardized all of it. So I will be watching. Maybe Hugh Freeze, I would be okay with that, getting his second chance in the SEC. I know he runs a good offense. We'll so, see where it goes. I, I've, I haven't been super impressed with what Hugh Freeze has done with uh, Nebraska. Liberty. Liberty. Yeah, Scott Excuse Frost, me. yeah. That's no. right. Okay. okay. I'm, Hugh Freeze is a guy at Liberty. Frost and Freeze. I'm yeah, sorry. Free, no. Uh, You're Scott absolutely. Frost Hugh Freeze. Is, yeah. I, I was thinking the wrong guy. I apologize. Hugh, Hugh Freeze, his time at Ole Miss was really good. He got into the That's trouble right. with the scandal. Uh, Alabama tried to bring him in as an OC a few years ago, and the SEC said no because of the trouble that he got in with Ole Miss. He's doing great things with Liberty. He's he doing is, great yeah. things with an Liberty's ex-Auburn awesome. quarterback in Malik mm-hmm. Willis who transferred out for Bo Nix coming in. There's a lot of question marks, and I will support my team till the end no matter what. Yes, there was a time to move on from Gus. I think this year there are some things in the air where it was like, damn, right now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, land of Bob Stoops, land in Urban Meyer. No one's going to hear another word about it because that's a name that is immediately better than a Gus Malzahn at coach. But you go out there and get Cristobal from Oregon. 
I'm sorry. I cannot definitively say that he's better. Yeah, no, he's not. I I he's I'm, not. I'm sorry. I, I am not a fan of Crystal Ball. I do not understand the the hype around Crystal Ball's name. You you had a dude who who was a top five talent in the NFL draft at the quarterback position, wasted it. Really, I mean, look, I I went through and watched two years of film on Justin Herbert, and there was such a uh, so few glimpses of how good he fucking was because Crystal Ball's offense didn't didn't give give him a chance to prove how good he was. Then he goes to the NFL and and he's fucking awesome. Granted, yeah, yeah the team around him isn't good, whatever. But he's been awesome. I, it makes absolutely no sense. Well, Crystal Ball's already Ball. lost to California this yeah. year and uh, Oregon State. It makes can, no fucking with a sense. Far to me. better roster. Yeah. I'm sorry, Auburn. We'll we'll close the book on that and we'll see where it goes forward. I am worried about my team state as a whole, and I know fear is not a reason you should keep a coach. But I look at UT. I, I look at some of the bottom dwellers of the SEC who have never been able to get their feet back under them in a time where we have Florida on the rise, Georgia still there, LSU might be coming up with Coach O, who knows? They just got a natty, though. You take natties and be shit the next year any given week. We'll see where it goes. All right. Um, I, I absolutely agree. Uh, do you want to talk about any other uh, firings in, in uh, college football that, that are worth mentioning real quick? Um no, I mean, it's it's just going to depend on what happens. I know Florida's defensive coordinator, Todd Grantham, he's in some hot water right now with their most recent loss uh, to LSU. Mm-hmm. LSU's on a really down year. It's it's weird to see Dan Mullen's relationship with Grantham and how he is so loyal to him that you could have Kyle Trask in this and Kyle Pitts, Kadarius Tony, such a good offensive slate, but ignore the fact that you're getting beat on the back end in defense. That's ultimately what cost you your playoff run this year. Yeah. Sad to say. Yeah. No, I, I absolutely agree. I, I didn't know if you wanted to mention uh, Vanderbilt. Obviously, that's a smaller school. No, um, it, it affects us because yeah, we live in Tennessee. Vandy but it might not Clark hit Lee, the... the Notre Dame defensive coordinator. Um, yeah. we'll, we'll see what it is. I think it's a lateral move. Okay. I, I think to be Vanderbilt, you have to. I, I really want to see an a, a unique young offensive mind, a hot candidate step up yeah. and get that job and be like, uh, James Franklin, what, what James Franklin yeah. was able to do, you have to spend something to these these kids at Vandy that is going to get them thinking outside the box and be like, man, we could be the first class that really gets Vandy I, going. I, I look at Vanderbilt as the ultimate jumping off point. It, it's the ultimate, you know, it, like you you go to Vandy and if you perform well, if you win six, you know, six, seven games a year, do what, uh, you know, what, what we saw uh, the dude who went to Penn. Uh, James Franklin. James yeah. Franklin. Sorry, I, I lost the name. You just said it. I uh, see do what Jim uh, James Franklin was able to do is a great jumping off point to the next job. And, and that sucks for Vandy fans. We're you know, friends with a couple of Vandy fans. But that's just the nature of the beast. If you can be a really, really great SEC option for for these up and coming coaches, that's not a bad thing to be. I don't think. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's a that's a great thing. If, I'll say one more. If Clark Lee is the guy, he graduated from Vandy. He's yeah. a Vandy alum, a longtime known booster for the program. Mm-hmm. So he has a genuine love for for that. If he can be the right guy in there, because Notre Dame has always had a stout defense over the years, that he this is his landing spot, not a yeah. jump spot for him, because of where his roots are tied to Vandy. So if he hits, you got a good one. We'll see. Fair enough. All right, so I'm going to ask one more question for you, and, and then we'll wrap up uh, the Auburn and, and yeah. just this portion of college. We'll get into the draft and then and then back into some college picks. Um, if there were if there was Bavada odds on the uh, the Urban Meyer Auburn uh, connection, right? Yeah. If there were if there was odds uh, that uh, what, what would you put it at? How likely do you think it is that that Urban Meyer would say, "I want to come back. I want to play Nick Saban every year. I want to be in that." In that situation, and I want to prove that I'm the greatest coach of all, you know, greatest college coach of all time, because that would be it would be a legacy move more than anything else. That's why I would put it at plus five thousand or higher. It's okay. going to be very slim. Urban yeah. is a legendary coach. Urban said no to the Texas job, mm-hmm. and Texas uh, athletic directors come out and said Tom Herman's our guy. Mm-hmm. Listen, at the end of the day, if you had Urban Meyer sniffing at that job with you the Texas, recruits, yeah, you that's you take that any day. The great state of Texas and all those football recruits that you could just get. Yeah. You're not going to turn Great that point. down. I'm sorry. That is prime rib college football dream job. Yeah. Gus Malzahn was rumored for it a long time mm-hmm. ago, and he stayed at Auburn. Should have left. I'm sorry. We didn't treat him right. Um, <laughs> Urban's not going to say yes to an Auburn like where you got to go through Nick Saban, where you got to compete against that every single year. Yeah. And let's be honest, a lesser talent pool. Bama gets the five stars. We get the four stars that they say no. Yeah. There, there's the occasional time where we get the guy, Tank, you, Tank Bigsby, freshman of yeah. the year, who decides, I just like Auburn. You know, that's, yeah. that's what I'm going to do. 
a Bo Nix situation where five yes. star number two probably could have gone to Alabama if he really wanted to. Yeah, and, exactly. And, he was the uh, number two quarterback in the class. Yeah. So, so you know, he he chooses Auburn obviously because of the the family connection. Absolutely fair. All right, let's move on. Uh, we're gonna do the mock draft. As I said in the intro here, uh, this is not gonna be a full thirty two pick first round mock draft. Uh, mainly because we don't want to be we don't want to be fake about this. Like we want to be honest yeah, with our viewers. We're gonna do the ten and show you good names. We're gonna be up there. We're gonna talk about the names we are have been excited about all season. Things that we we have talked about on our own and. We we did a little bit of research mainly. We looked up the slate of what it would be right now and then looked at a couple names that, that other people are talking about. Beyond that, we just want to give you guys the big the big names that you're going to hear throughout the draft season. And as I said in the intro, and I'm going to say it again, we are going to be talking college fo- or draft throughout the uh, draft season and past the, the draft season. That is going to be the main topic of focus on this pod. So if you're interested in stuff like that, Please stick around with us. Please subscribe to the Between the Pilots uh, YouTube to check out the the uh, draft profiles. Uh, you know, listen to us our podcast every week. All that stuff. That I really uh, appreciate it. If you're interested in that type of content, you're going to get a lot of that here. Uh, but let's get going. Uh, and and first pick. I I had a first pick, right? I picked yes. first because you didn't want me to have the second pick, and we'll we'll get to that in a second. Uh, um, number one. Uh, Jets are slated for that number one pick. Doesn't look like it's going to change at this point. It might, but it, there's you look, a chance. There's a chance, but we'll see what happens. Uh, no, no surprise here. Trevor Lawrence. Uh, I believe course. if you go on Bavada and, and you look up the odds for the number one pick, you're going to see that Trevor Lawrence is minus seven fifty. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to ask you this: Is there any any way? And I'll like open up to the possibility of injury. Any single scenario where Trevor Lawrence is not the number one pick. <laughs> The Jets go on a run, the Jags go on a run, and the Bengals lose out. And the Bengals get the number one overall pick. That is the only way that Trevor Lawrence is not going here because the Bengals, even now, then, I think the Bengals yeah, are going to trade out of yeah, that situation. Even if that happens, there, there's going to yeah. be a feeding frenzy but, for that but pick. If, if it wasn't, that would be Panay Sewell, the offensive lineman, going to the Bengals' number one overall. But I am sorry, at minus 750 odds, you bet 750 win 100. Yeah. It's as sure money as it gets. If you have that money in your pocket, just if it's in your savings or whatever, go do it just because you're going to get that money <laughs> yeah. back. I'm telling it's you. It's a scary, it's a scary bet. I get it. It feels like, it, it doesn't again, feel like you can get any more I'm sure. so high on Trevor Lawrence, just the same as everyone else that it, it's going to hit yeah. whether or not you think he's going to be good or not. That's, that's up for debate. But when it comes to this number one pick, there's no debate about who QB one is. I'm yeah. sorry. It's over. Yeah. And I really don't even think there's much of a debate. Like I, this is going to be a similar to when Andrew Luck came out. And obviously there's other examples. It's a Andrew but Luck. It is a Peyton Manning. Yeah, we weren't really paying attention as much. We were, we were pretty young when Peyton Manning came out. So Andrew Luck is the, is the connection that we personally have where like there was no debate. I, there was really nobody even arguing that he wouldn't be a great quarterback in the NFL. Really that, I, that I know of, there might've been a couple, you know, naysayers, but for the most part, yeah, that's the number one pick. That's a slam dunk. Number two is your pick, and I want you to give it, explain the reasoning, and then I'll explain why this number two pick was taken away from me of course. before we even really started this. And I think it's a I, story. I had to just because <laughs> th- th- it's going to be up for debate, and there's going to be, we're really going to get to see where these analysts have put their we'll money where their mouth is. That's why I'm kind of excited because like, we, give the pick. We, yeah. we go so in depth, and it. it's yeah. Justin Fields, Ohio State quarterback. Yeah. With so many different quarterbacks, and, go, and by the way, going to the Jacks, the, the, it's the Jacks Jacksonville Jaguars. Jaguars get number two, two through six quarterbacks, man, can get flipped around, tossed up. You never know what it's, what it's going to be. I like Justin Fields. I have stayed with Justin Fields. He is a very accurate, decent pocket passer. He maneuvers well. He is mobile. He makes the plays when you have to. He's done everything at Ohio State that you could ask. Yep. Your biggest naysay against him is he doesn't do it against good talent. I'm sorry. At the end of the day, there are several other guys on this list, and later on that have that play just the same amount of talent, but do worse against that. He's near perfection. If he would have played a full season, honestly, he would have been the Heisman winner. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's why the Jags are going to get him. I think he's a playmaker. All right. And tell him, tell him why you, you took this pick away from me. I took this pick away because uh, it was going to go to another quarterback who we will mention later. Um, and I just felt like it was, it, it's not outlandish. That name's going to be rising a lot. Okay. And I'm telling well, you, let's oh, just say it. We won't say where he's going yeah, on this, exactly, but Zach, Zach Wilson, Wilson uh, we, I won't talk about why I like him so much, but it, look, Jacob called it, uh, you know, privately between yeah. us. And then I think you talked about it on the, the pod too. Was up, I said, you can't do him there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, cause I know that I'm going to be on Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson is the prototypical quarterback that I personally like that I am a fan of. And look, everyone has their preference preference. That doesn't make me wrong. It, it, it's my bias. And I will full 100% own that. I just think 
this type of quarterback is the type of quarterback that is where the that NFL is going. Really I, I've seen a lot of them succeed a lot at the next level recently. So I, I'm, I'll follow that trend. And look, if, I, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. It is what it is. I think Zach Wilson is a great quarterback. And you don't disagree with that either. No, you're just, I like you're Zach just Wilson standing a lot. That, You're standing by the at this point. And look, and this isn't, I, don't, I won't, you can tell me if you disagree, but there's a chance that you could switch your, your opinion too. And once you, you dive into oh, it a little yeah, bit more, no, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say that Zach Wilson isn't yeah. QB two. He has flash of that your argument I've seen enough of justin fields jacksonville you, know. you cannot risk taking the yeah. franchise guy and missing and your argument to me was the, when we're doing this we're doing this super early like this isn't like a realistic this is just talking about the, ne- the number one guys he was basically saying it would be disingenuous to put zach wilson ahead of justin fields at this point totally fair, fair argument yeah. i didn't fight him hard on it. i was like you know what you just take the number two pick so i don't have to be put in that situation uh because he's right there he's are absolutely odds right. on bovada about justin fields going number one overall though yeah uh, let me pull it up just it's, so we have it here. Uh, listen, it's it's different. It's out there, and plus honestly, 50, yeah, it's plus five fifty. And to think that I think it should be more. Just it goes back to the Trevor Lawrence odds. I think it should be more just because. I'm sorry, Trevor is that much better than anyone else in this class with it. He is the next option. It's it's him and then Benay Sewell, who, who we'll talk about in a second. Be something I know that this, I can't compare this to a Sam Darnold. Baker Mayfield because they weren't that good. Mm. But Sam Darnold coming out was one of the highest graded quarterbacks by most analysts out there. Mm -hmm. It was shocking when Baker went number one. Oh, it really was. Yeah, I it would be ten times beyond that. that. Yeah, it would. It it would be beyond that. Yeah, absolutely. But hey, it, it, it. Crazier things have happened. Um, we'll we'll move on. Uh, number three pick. This is your pick. That's this you? is no no no. Oh yeah, this is my pick. I'm sorry. Uh, this is Cincinnati Bengals. Obviously, uh, I think they need to shore up their offensive line. Benay Sewell is close to like a slam dunk number one uh, tight uh, line or linebacker offensive lineman out there uh, out of Oregon. Uh, he has been the dude. He would have been a top five pick if he came out last year, but he couldn't. Uh, we're assuming he's going to come out this year. If he does, he will be a top three, top five pick. He'll be, the, I, I believe he'll be the first offensive player taken that's not a quarterback. You slam dunked it right here. Bengals can't go wrong with this. Yeah. And you they have, need a, and they need offensive line. You have Jonah Williams from last year who was hurt his rookie year coming yeah. back, and hopefully you can really start to make strides in protecting Burrow because we saw yeah. what happens when you don't. Yeah, it's I absolutely scary. agree. And it was it was unfortunate that this past draft uh, where where they took Burrow and they made a lot of good decisions. I mean, obviously, T. Higgins has been an awesome addition that they got with the 33rd pick. They didn't really attack the offensive line until way later in the draft. and yep. It just didn't end up working out for him. I, I think that was a mistake on their part. They probably should have taken a swing at offensive linemen in the third round because uh, look, it's well, bad. Look it's really bad. Exactly. So so they, they have to go here. I think if they went anywhere else, there's an outside chance that Leatherwood uh, in up being the number one um, offensive lineman taken. I don't think it's going to happen. We don't think it's going to happen. But Alex Leatherwood, who's not on this list, is the other offensive lineman to think. I don't think we have another line, uh, offensive lineman uh, that we're going to be talking about on this one. I think that's the only other name out of Alabama that, yeah, that I mean, should there, be known. There's one out of Michigan, pretty solid. There's a lot of them out there. There's that, a lot of names, of course. Uh, yeah. One out of Texas, six foot seven guy. But at the end of the day, it's Panay. Panay yeah. is, people have compared him to Anthony Munoz. I mean, that's one of the greatest linemen of all time. Yeah. To be mentioned with that, I, I I can't get off of it. But number four, Chargers. We have them picking right here. This one was kind of tough yeah. because there were some different areas they could the, go. This is where it opens up. Right? It does. Yeah. Right here is where the first three pretty scripted. After this is where you're going to see a lot of people be like, all right, there's there's some roads here because it's offense or defense for the Chargers. Yeah. And their secondary is getting older, mainly their cornerback position. Yeah. You know, And when they fall off, they fall off hard. So why not get the best one in the class, in my opinion, in Patrick Sertan yeah. out of Alabama? We saw the Patrick, things. Is, Patrick Sertan the second. That his dad was able to do in the league. Exactly. Um, legendary career. Uh, Hall of Fame? He, I think he's a Hall of Fame. I think he's Hall of Fame. I, I, believe I, put I, that out there. I, know, I know how good of a player he is, though, in the, stuff, the highlights that I've seen out of it. Yeah. You're able to get that same thing coming in at the Chargers, and you're going to bolster your secondary and your defense, which – you're really going to need that. Your offense is going the right way. Yeah, I, I remember I remember watching film. I, and again, I, a lot of these guys I've seen anecdotally, but I haven't really studied. Uh, but we'll, we'll obviously get to that as the process goes on. Uh, but I remember watching film on Diggs last year, the corner the corner of Alabama that, yeah, ends, up, it, that ends up going to uh, the Cowboys in the second round last year. I remember watching film on him, and, and Patrick Sertan just kept popping and popping. I was like, am I watching the wrong guy? Like, what's going on here? And it, it come to find out it's the guy who's going to be a— a top 10 pick next year. Um, so, so yeah, I'm, I'm a hundred percent on board with that pick. Love that pick. Uh, and then the Cowboys at number five this is a big one. And, and this is where I, I kind of said, okay, 
I'm not saying this is going to happen, but this is like, we don't have, we're not doing this for accuracy. I wanted to have this name in there. I'm not saying this is going to happen. Obviously, Cowboys number five going quarterback, Zach Wilson, BYU. I, I do believe Zach Wilson will be the, the number two or three quarterback to go off the board. And I could be wrong on that. Trey Lance is going to be in the conversation. Um, you know, Mac Jones is going to be in the conversation. A lot of names, actually. Kyle Trash, Trash. Uh, Kyle Trash is going to be in the conversation. Uh, that's the last quarterback we have, and we will we will talk plenty about quarterbacks. But I wanted to bring up the possibility of the Cowboys saying, hey, we have a great foundation for a football team. We have a ton of players that we're paying. Our offensive line is going to get better when it gets healthier next year. Why do we want to pay Dak Prescott $35 million? And I'm not saying he's not bad. He's not a good quarterback. He absolutely is. And he probably even deserves that. But on this roster, this team, do you need to pay uh, a Dak Prescott or do you go out and get a young, cheap option for the next five years and try and build around him and try and win now? I mean, is that fair to say? Obviously, no, it's hard to say that. There's a reason you, yeah. you popped it up and mentioned it. And it's like, yeah, I mean, listen, you offered Dak $35 million when he was healthy. He said no. He he believed in himself, which is, is awesome and everything. And, it's just unfortunate the injury happened, yeah. and now what do you do? Listen, it, it, there's there's been articles that that have come out basically arguing or kind of uh, pointing out the the situation that Dak's in, and it's actually better. He has even more uh, even he more negotiation leverage. power, and really this would be the only move the Cowboys could make if they decided to drag their feet on the Dak Prescott uh, sign. The reason I say that though is that they drug their feet in the past with Dak. Yes, with a healthy Dak and a proven Dak. Dak, you know. Great quarterback. Yeah. yeah I mean, exactly. we're, we're great quarterback. On. But you just got to see what you got to do with your paychecks and balancing your books. There, uh, just this, depends. Is, this is what I'm going to say. And we've seen it. Okay. Let me, let me frame this conversation just real quick. At some point, there is going to be an NFL quarterback or an NFL team, NFL franchise that has a young quarterback that has been doing really good, that has played really, really well. And they're going to have to make, they're going to make the decision not to pay him the 35, $40 million and instead go with a younger option out of college. It's going to happen at some point. An NFL team is going to say, Hey, I don't want to pay this quarterback who's average, not, not terrible. It's not bad to be average, but who is average, but not an all-star, the all-star money on par with the Russell Wilson's and Patrick Mahomes and all the other things. Look, you can make the argument. We've seen their division rival, the Eagles, are, are now playing their second round pick instead of uh in, instead of Wentz, Wentz because they 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 pay Carson Wentz. And look, Carson Wentz has uh, been hurt and there's been other issues there. I, I get that, but I, I I look at the Rams right now. I don't I don't think Jared Goff is doing anything special for the Rams. The Rams are a great team. They're winning and, and they're doing a lot of things really well. But I, I would argue that you could put I mean you could put a Jalen Hurt Hurts in there and and at this point in their the season, they'd be doing fine right now. I, I maybe that's a bold thing to say, but a team that runs through their defense and their running game I, and Jared Goff's just average. So those are the two teams that come to mind as teams that maybe could have made that decision. The Cowboys are another team. Maybe they make that decision. I'm not saying they're going to. I, it's not likely even, but I think it's worth mentioning. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a reason we had Zach Wilson, the quarterback, mentioned just because it's going to be that argument, that decision yeah. that's going to happen. The the easier pick would be going cornerback here, and you would have to you know get one of the guys, Caleb Farley, J.C. Horn, that are going to be later yeah, on yeah. down there. There's a lot um, of different ways you could go with the Cowboys if, if you don't call quarterback. Obviously. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, and at number six, we have the Carolina Panthers. Uh, they're going to go Micah Parsons, linebacker. Yeah. I think they're really missing that Luke Keekley role on defense. And I'm not going to sit here and say that he he fits that exactly, mm -hmm. but it's your commander on your defense. Yeah. Micah Parsons is linebacker one. He is just a polarizing force up front. And, yeah, and I know the, the pick's probably going to be to go offense because you went all defense last year. But when the board falls the way that it has so far and looking at it forward, that's – you can't miss on him right there. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree. I think this is one of those situations where if you if you look at the Panthers pick, yes, they went defense all last year, and you're, you kind of think, okay, rebuild this second year of their rebuild. Uh, do you go offense this year? Like that's the logic there. I get that, but Michael Parsons, he deserves to be a top five, top six pick in the in the draft. I think he will be. Uh, it wouldn't make sense for him to go to the Cowboys, obviously, because well, he just can't fall. Yeah, yeah, he just can't fall too far. Uh, Panthers could be a dark horse to take a quarterback. That's possible, but they they did all right with uh, with Bridgewater. I certainly didn't think that Bridgewater was the reason they were they were losing a lot of games anyway. Um, you know, they're just a young team that that just has wasn't great. Uh, they made some serious strides.
as a defense. They hit on a Jeremy Chin, who might end up being the defensive rookie of the year. Obviously, you got Derek Brown, who's been awesome in the in the middle there. Uh, I think they want to shore up that defense. If you're not going to go defense here, you maybe go quarterback. But if you're not going to do that, you probably just go offensive okay, line. The, the, the I think offense, that was the only the other really yeah O line I guess yeah. for quarterback because. Your weapon surrounding that is really good. I mean, yeah, you, were able to, you were able to go out. You scored some points against the Buccaneers, elite defense, the Chiefs, yep. you know, positive all around. Yeah, so no, short I, the defense, like we said. I absolutely agree. And it's Number not like seven. you need you don't need help with offensive weapons. That's for damn sure. Um, uh, we'll move on to Falcons at number seven. Uh, what do the Falcons need? What do the Falcons always need? I mean, they drafted a cornerback <laughs> last year in the first round who's awesome, and he's actually playing really well down the stretch. Uh, I think they need another one for the other side because their, their defense just isn't good. Uh, they're going to have to go defense somewhere, I feel like. So this this pick, uh, Caleb Farley, cornerback, Vatek, um, I, I think he's he's one of the do he's one of the first guys to uh, opt out this he season. Uh, so we don't have any film from this year, but he he opted out for a reason because he knew he was going to be a top end talent. It is so scary. It is so scary that we're going to be getting into this conversation with these top picks on guys that haven't played in a year. They haven't played football in a year. That's scary in the sense that, you know, how often do we have top guys that we're looking at for the draft that just fall off in their last year in college and end up being guys that we thought could be top 10 picks end up being, you know, mid second, third round picks. That's where it's scary, and that's just the the situation that all of these teams are going to be in when they make a decision to take a guy who who opted out or didn't play a lot this year. Just is what it is. I, I, I'm I don't think you can be afraid of that with this guy, all star dude. Obviously, if he, he's going to have to have a big off season to stay in this type of range, but I think he's a name that you should absolutely know. Yeah, I mean, whenever it comes. Uh the draft pro day combines mm. and all that stuff. He's going to knock it out of the water. Yeah. There's going to be, there's going to be a senior he's, bowl he's and physical, everything. Yeah. He's in your face. He's gritty. He plays man. Well, he plays mm-hmm. press. He's able to do it all in zone. So he fits this mold for any style defense that you want. And the Falcons really need a cornerback. They AJ mm-hmm. Terrell looks like a, a, a really good hit so far, Yeah, but man, you got to have more. If you're going to be able to compete at the end of the day right now, if the Falcons stay there's, there's rumors about Falcons quarterback. Mm-hmm. not going to lie. There's rumors about Falcons going wide receiver out there because who knows what they're going to do with Matt Ryan, Julio Jones combination. Mm-hmm. For now, given what we have in front of us, it's Caleb Farley just because he's the next best corner off the board. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely agree. And then uh, your, your yeah, pick I'll take I'll take your Dolphins and I will do my pick and then we will do the thought that we, because we had a conversation about this one because yeah. I just think this is something that you cannot miss on. It is another guy who sat out. Awesome athlete. I think that has a chance to be one of the greatest wide receivers on combine draft day buzz around that we have seen in a long time. Yeah. It is Jamar Chase out of LSU. Yeah. He is something different, man. I'm telling you. Special. Even Listen, last year, when you look at Justin Jefferson, I, I, that's exactly yeah. what I was going to get. And I just want to say this real quick: Justin Jefferson is the best rookie wide receiver this year, right? And, and he played on this team with with Jamar Chase. Watching Justin Jefferson was awesome, awesome film. But Jamar Chase was superior him. wide receiver at every single level. Uh, this is the exact same feeling I had about a Brandon Ayuk with, with you know, Brandon Ayuk looks so much better than Nikhil Harry did. And Nikhil Harry went in the first round. Brandon Ayuk obviously ends up going look going in the first round as well. I feel like Brandon Ayuk is going to have a much better career than Nikhil Harry. Uh, I think it's very similar to that, except better at both, uh, you know, Jamar uh, at, in the sense that Justin Jefferson is going to be a great wide receiver. Jamar Chase has the possibility the opportunity to be an elite all-time great wide receiver that's that's his ceiling and that's why i say you can't miss out on that i know you yeah. have a lot of good great weapons at wide receiver right now and yeah. it's looking good but man help to out get him a true Devonte parker jamar chase just yeah. duo that could kill yeah, so we we did talk about this. These last couple of picks, I'm gonna be honest. I think from seven to ten, it, it kind of just became a roundtable discussion as far as it, instead of just a like, lot of oh, ways. let's let I want to make this pick. You want to make that pick? Uh, we just kind of really wanted to have the best names in there. Uh, and you know, I think Jamar Chase would have been in in here no matter what because the Eagles would take him if the Dolphins don't in our mock at least. Um, I, I I've I had an issue with it. My big question was, do the Dolphins want to take Jamar Chase when we do have a Preston Williams who's looking really good? Obviously, Devontae Parker's really good. Uh, we have some third, you know, uh, you know, third string, third uh, third wide receivers that that are doable. Obviously, they're no Jamar Chase. I'm not saying they are, but I think you know when you look at true need. You know, you probably need D line more. You need to shore up the the run game. You probably need offensive line more than wide receiver. This is kind of a sexy, but it is uh, it is the amount pick. of talent that Jamar Chase has. Yeah, I don't hate. It. I love it. He, Let me be he, fair. He is leaps and bounds above any O line you would take right now. 
any D line that you would think to take right now. Jamar yeah. Chase is a special talent. There's a reason that Justin Jefferson was able to do what he did, and then you're like, man, he's good, but wait till Jamar Chase comes out. Yeah, that's yeah, what. Yeah, we're yeah. Gonna no, do. I absolutely agree. And look, I, as I said, I love it. I will be so fucking ecstatic if we get a guy like this as a Dolphins fan. Uh, but it, I did have that like, ooh, would we would we go for the like, the more traditional this is our needs type of pick or do we truly just say hey jamar chase is the best player on the board let's take him yeah um well let's move on i'll let you let you give uh number nine here yeah number nine uh jalen waddle wide receiver i like it going to the philadelphia eagles they need a guy who's really going to be able to step up and listen at the end of the day maybe it wasn't the weapons surrounding carson wentz maybe it was just carson wentz jalen hurts has been able to come on this past week especially in that victory over the saints and he spread the ball well he used a lot of their weapons we saw how Sean Jeffrey actually play football again. Mm-hmm. It was different. Um, Jalen Rieger, he's an electric guy that he's just having a problem. I think the COVID year really hurt him yeah. getting into that offense as a whole. But getting Jalen Waddle coming back off this injury, he is an elite athlete and someone who might actually be able to hit in this Eagles wide receiver core because they have missed on many guys in the past. The, the real question is, do they do they go wide receiver two years in a row when you, when you have a beat-up roster the way they do where they could go in a lot of different directions and probably be okay. I, I think you do. The, the offensive yeah. line has been injured. I don't think that means that you've missed. You, you're you missing Brandon Brooks. You had to kick out Jason Peters over to guard, and Lord knows he can't. He can barely do that. Yeah. So uh, losing Andre Dillard. Let me ask you this: what are what are the what would you put the Bavada odds at them just taking wide receiver? If it's not Jalen Waddle, it's a uh, you know Deontay Smith or, or whoever it is. Wh- where would you put it in that that regard? I, I think it's. I think it's in the minus category. I, I really do. I think, think that's, that's how, the, I think that's how that's big of a favorite, favorite it should yeah. be for them to take a wide receiver. Anything else, and it's like, okay, explain now. Yeah. But I mean, <laughs> if, you say, if you say Philadelphia needs wide receiver, yeah, move along with our day. We're good. Yeah, exactly. Just pick which one you want yeah. right there. Uh, fair enough. And look, we don't need to tell you why Jalen Waddle's good. Just another in a long line of great Alabama wide receivers. Honestly, the biggest conversation is who's going to be better, Waddle or Smith? You know, they, there's going to be two out there, that, and who knows? I think Waddle. Is I, Alabama I'm not sure. wide receiver you? Yes. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I, th- I think it just, it's over. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't really. It shouldn't be an argument. I mean, you Julio, go back. Julio, Calvin, yeah. Amari, Jalen Waddle, Devonte Smith, Jerry Judy, Henry Ruggs. I mean, it is it is crazy. There, there's a yeah. mention for uh, LSU. Uh, yeah, LSU has some great ones with Odell, Justin Jefferson. Uh, Justin Jamar, Jamar, Jarvis. Yeah, of course. Listen, I'll, uh, the SEC is is wide receiver. You at the end of the there's wide receiver. They put a conference. lot of good ones out. Really uh, yeah, but I mean, you you look at Alabama. And it's just like man. It used to be every other year that they had a, a top end wide receiver. Now it seems like it's every year. They're this, a damn machine. Yeah, they're going to have four in two years that go in the first round. It's mean, yep. just ridiculous. Uh, yeah, so I absolutely agree. Let's let's close it out with our short 10, uh, 10 pick mock draft. And the Giants come in at number 10. Uh, a lot of conversation here. We we ended up going Quiddy Pay. I, I, did I say that? I might have butchered that name. Yeah, I apologize. Uh, defense alignment out, out of Michigan. I am nervous about this guy, and it, and I'm nervous about this guy in the same reason that like I get nervous about uh, Florida corners. It's just because I've seen so many miss, and that is not fair. I understand that. Coming, but, you're talking Michigan. Yeah, defense Michigan defensive yeah. linemen. I've seen too many miss. And granted, the, the good ones end up going in the mid-rounds to, to the Patriots, and the bad ones go in the first round to the Packers. Weird, weird scenarios. Like um, but, you know, it's just very, very nerve-wracking to me for me to say that that he should be there but look he's done nothing wrong you know i don't grade the the jersey grade the player and he's an all-time uh well, the one, player, one of the, the best players, players very, in the, yeah in the college player's very right talented now. i think he's going to be the first defensive lineman off the board i for really sure. like gregory rousseau a lot he's been falling down a lot of people's boards coming off of yeah. he uh, he could end up going in the 20s yeah he, he, he really could. could he really could and it just shows where it, this is going to be a year though where we like i said we really get to see analysts put their money where their mouth is there's going to be guys, like you said, that we haven't seen play. Jamar Chase in a few years, Caleb Farley in, in a few seasons, Rondell Moore, minimal film. There are quarterbacks in Trey Plenty. Lance where you get to see where they're going to put them. There's going to be so many different mock draft boards where it's like, wow, he's a six here, but he's a 26 here. Yeah. Because it's just it just depends on where everything falls uh, Quiddy Pay goes here. He helps out a, gi- a young Giants defense that's getting some attitude to them uh, Need some later help on the in the D-line. year. The other option for me would have been wide receiver. I just think that Darius Slayton is a good one. Golden Tate is probably going to be off the team yeah. next year, you know, aging and going. 
Daniel Jones, I like where he's going moving forward. So get him another target to throw yeah. to. Throw and to. and this is just a guy he he's going to fit in that that you know tried and true Alabama or not Alabama, uh, New England style defense alignment they look for. Just those big ugly type of guys that that will you know move the pocket, play, do everything right. Uh, in the same vein as the Dolphins took a, a Christian Wilkins, who you know I don't I don't think anybody was like super excited about that pick, but he's just been such a solid good player uh, throughout his his young career, and you know Dolphins are very happy with that pick. Hopefully that's the same kind of pick they get with the Giants here. Yeah. A solid, good, Pro Bowl type of guy who's, who can be there for the next 10 years and, and you know lining up in the middle of that defensive line. Uh, that's great. Anywhere else you want to go with uh, draft? No, we're going to be yeah. bouncing back and forth to it all the time now. Yeah, so wrapping up. let's finish it up and let's talk college because this is going to be the biggest week in college football. Um, a lot of big games, a lot of conference games. I, I want to pull it up. I want to pull up some odds on Bavada here, and, and we're just going to kind of go through some of the big games, uh, see what you're thinking. You know, we're not – we're not going to worry too much about uh, winners, losers, but like how how can this affect the overall draft uh, or excuse me, the the overall uh, four teams that, that end up in the finals? Uh, all, all of those things are going to be have to be thought about here. And let me pull it up. I'm struggling. Uh, where do you want to go with this first? Uh, well, I think we need to look at the one through four right now and kind of see how that's going to shape up with championship weekend coming up. Yeah. And Clemson and Notre Dame about to play each other. Um, I'm sorry, but if Notre Dame is able to edge out that game and they did the first time around Clemson, you're out. And it's unfortunate to say with as loaded of a roster that you have, you know, that that's probably the way that it's just going to fall this be. time around. Yeah. I, I would put my money on Clemson. Um, Bavada has them as a 10 point favorite. It's, it's hard to bet on a 10 point spread when you just lost previously, but mm-hmm. I think Trevor Lawrence is dynamic yeah. enough to where he's able to swing and that in their favor. Everyone needs to remember Trevor Lawrence wasn't there and it still went to double overtime and a rookie quarterback or freshman quarterback, yeah, excuse DJ me, Ugalera. made, made a, a freshman mistake and, and took a sack when he shouldn't have game was pretty much over after that. Uh, yeah. I don't think Trevor Lawrence would make that mistake. I don't think Trevor yeah. Lawrence would let his team be in that situation. To me, this is Clemson's game to lose. Uh, I think Notre Dame should be kicked out of the playoffs. If they lose this, can we agree that this is just an extended playoff game essentially it, it, it's hard to say there are so many different scenarios that you can go through on this alabama's in they're locked it's it's done dead well what if they lose no they're in they're, oh, they're oh i see what you're saying Bama's yeah. in no matter what i don't care you're what saying even if they it. even if they lose the sec championship yeah, they're they still can get in. their absolute teeth kicked in and they're oh, still i don't know if i agree with that I Do wanna, you think so you cannot name another team that'll go in a two loss florida yeah. Okay. No, you're you're, you're right. You're right. I, the one loss A and M. Who's that loss to? Alabama. Okay, but look, if, if Alabama's a guaranteed in, I would put my life on it. If if Alabama gets their shit, their their seventeen point favorite. If Alabama gets their teeth kicked in, which I don't think either of us are, think is going to happen, but if Alabama loses by twenty to Florida, Florida still can't get in two loss. But Texas A and M at number five, if they win, they're probably in over over Alabama. Yeah, you're gonna, I would you're think you're going to have two SEC teams. You think Alabama no drops to four? No matter what Alabama is in, there is no way that they are okay. going to be out Listen, of this uh, scenario. We, we, we agree because at yeah. the end of the day, Alabama is going to beat Florida. So, so I'll, I'll lay that to bed. Well, no, you have to talk about an argument to it. I mean, that's why I said Alabama's a lock because win or lose, they're in in my book. But yeah. if there's a way that you think that, that they're out, Ohio State has played a minimal schedule. I don't think you can justify a six-game that the best team that they played was Indiana and they struggled with them. I'm sorry. I yeah. think I think Bama getting through their schedule the way that they have in mm-hmm. the dominant fashion – They've outscored almost 500 to 150. Their Listen, I, yeah, no, I agree. I think Alabama is probably going to win it all. I think Alabama is a great Bama, team. If Bama gets the shit kicked out of them, but, the narrative is that they were looking ahead and they're still in. Yeah, but if you're looking at it, like, it's not going to happen. I, I I disagree with you, but I don't think it's going to happen. So so we'll we'll leave that, uh, so leave lock, that to bed. Let's them. go lock them. Let, let's go back to Clemson Notre Dame. Can we agree that the loser is not going to get into the playoffs, right? Most likely. Yeah, I don't see a way where because this is this is the number two, three matchup anyway. So this is the playoffs. But it just ends up being the ACC championship ahead of time, <coughs> which is great for the number five and number six team that actually is going to have a chance to sneak in there. I, I do not think if Notre Dame, if Notre Dame loses this game, they just lost to Clemson. They ha- both these teams have to be going in thinking that this is playoffs because if Clemson loses to Notre Dame twice, they're once out. with Trevor Lawrence and once without, they're out. And yeah. if Notre Dame loses to Clemson, well, they just lost to the team that they were going to just play. So that's the game. I, I get that, I, and you, I, you wouldn't want that refresher on your minds as a committee. But I yeah. think there are lesser teams down there that it's it's hard to jump. What happened with Florida in that LSU loss, I don't know if you saw the way that that played out, 
But Marco Wilson is Quincy Wilson's brother at Florida. Yeah, got a got an unsportsmanlike yeah. for throwing a shoe. Well, uh, that cost him, man. Even before that, I mean, the the fluky interception, I think, in the second quarter, where there it was, was just it a was lot, bounced a lot off. of ways that that game just wasn't yeah. happening. Yeah, but Florida probably should have won that game. It was just kind of like, like I said, very fluky interception. One I, think of the they were, I think they were looking ahead to Alabama. <laughs> yeah, I I agree with that as well. You know, but, but uh, again, I think if that game is played ten times, Florida probably wins that eight or eight, eight nine times out of ten. It just wasn't their day. So. So Florida is in a situation where they can't get in two losses. I, I get that. Um, who who else? Who, who, yeah, I, I was, right right now we have the winner of Clemson Notre Dame. They're mm-hmm. locked. Bama locked. Winner of Clemson Notre Dame locked. So we have a one and two. We don't know the Clemson Notre Dame. We'll take that for what it is. Yeah, there's an argument for Notre Dame to get in if they lose by a field goal to Clemson. There is an argument that they're going to get in because you have the you have the one loss Notre Dame. Mm-hmm. And you have a one loss Texas A and M. Okay, so you need, but I would think in that scenario you need Texas A and M to lose to Tennessee. That's not happening. Okay, I'm, I'm just saying I don't think Texas A and M deserves to get kicked out. Texas A and M deserves to get that number four spot. If actually, shit, Texas A and M is in. Uh, honestly, if they're number five now, one of these teams loses. Texas A and M deserves would, that five, they that four spot. Drop past that. At, the current, all, at it, the current moment, the committee's debating in Ohio State, Texas A and M right now. Yeah, that that's a tough one. I think it's Texas A and M. Texas A and M plays a full SEC schedule, and, and and you don't let them in to at least have a chance at Alabama. Uh, I, I would think they're going to sneak into. I don't like four. Texas A and M this year. I don't think they would win. Okay. I, I think, then, then I think why logically, why why put them in though? Man, the, the committee has based itself on putting in the best value product that we're going to. Man, this is this is where we get to. It's like especially this year, and I know you disagree with this. Yeah, but this year. They should have done a sixteen-team uh, part of uh, 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 playoffs. They should have. It's it's. This is a, a fucking COVID year, and I think the teams that that had to play a half schedule. If Oregon was a one-loss team and, and you know played well down the stretch, Oregon should have had a chance to to come in. Uh, you know, they, I'm I'm looking at you know maybe a Pac-12 team that that had you know half a schedule and maybe could have done something looked really good. I, I'm saying all these like extra teams should get a chance during COVID year. I, I don't know. It just feels, it feels like I get that it's too much and, and all that, but at the same time, it's been a, con- a condensed season already. So it's not like these kids are playing too many games. Uh, I, I don't, I, get that. I, I don't see what would be wrong with that. Even if you don't like, even if you don't like 10, you could have do an NFL style where the, for the top two get a buy and, and you have eight on eight. So 10, 10 teams get in, uh, uh no, you know, there's, there's a way that it sounds better to the ear. 16, I think is too many. I don't want to see a Coastal Carolina. I'm sorry. Yeah, maybe it'd be cool to give them their shot and see how it goes. But man, you're going to say that whenever it's it's just a boring game. And at the end of the day, you're not lo- it, TV ratings matter to this, the committee whenever they yeah. go into these certain things. You know, there's a reason they don't like to schedule whenever two SEC teams made it. They don't like them facing off again back to back. Yeah, people don't want to see that. The, anyone north of the Mason Dixon line <laughs> hates the SEC. I'm yeah. sorry, they don't want to see any any more teams in right there. They're the ones saying Ohio State's jumping the Texas A&M. It's up for debate. Ohio State is a better football team than Texas A&M. Texas yeah, A&M is built in the but, trenches. But Ohio State hasn't lost. They're they're gonna they're gonna play they're gonna play Northwestern this yeah. week. They're favored by 20, 21 points according to Bavada, and I do believe they they will win that game. And they're in the playoffs. They're gonna get their shot. They're the team that everyone thought was gonna be good down the stretch. They're gonna get their shot. And it's one of the situations where they didn't get to play their their big game against Michigan. And I still think they're probably gonna get get in anyway. And I think they should. It's like like you said. That's where the argument for more teams comes in because you shouldn't punish. You shouldn't punish any of these kids for what they've gone through. By the way, just a quick aside. We had a bet uh, during the offseason, not before we really realized how bad this uh, this COVID year was going to affect us. It was a fifty dollar bet. And I I get you to pick two teams. I took the field. Right. So you took Clemson and Ohio State to win the national championship. I take the field. Right. Uh, Just a fun bet. Like, no, no big deal. We talked about it last week where if Ohio State didn't get to play Michigan, that we would call it null and void. And I was fine with that. They didn't get to play Michigan, but they're still in the conversation with them. Do you want to keep that bet going or not? Yeah. Uh, okay. they, I was just they, curious they, if they you modified how you felt the, about that. The only reason that I didn't I didn't want to get in because of some rule that said you have to have six games played uh, to play gotcha. in this championship. They modified that. Yes, a lot of the nation was upset, but I'm sorry. In a COVID year, we all have to realize that we have to be flexible with our yeah, rules. You can't punish a really good Ohio State team. I don't like Ohio State. I mm-hmm. never once will rep Ohio State in any way, but they shouldn't be punished for a game being canceled on Michigan's part due to COVID. It's just not right. I think Ohio State's going to represent in there. I think Ohio State should edge out a one-loss Texas A&M. And they will, I think. And and they should. And the re and Texas A&M's shot is they need Clemson to demolish Notre Dame. They mm. need Clemson to come out and show 
Yeah. Trevor's the reason why y'all beat us. I, now I look out. at I look at the the situation right now, and you can disagree with me, yeah. but I look at the situation where really no matter what, assuming Ohio State and Texas A and M win. All right, that's the key. If both those teams win, uh, obviously, you know, we, we have Ohio State playing Northwestern favored by 21 points, according to Bavada, and Texas A&M playing Tennessee favored by 14 points, according to Bavada. Uh, both of those games are, are games they should win. If they win, no matter what happens, they're in. Because Clemson Notre Dame, a team is going to lose this Clemson Notre Dame game that's going to be played at three o'clock on the nineteenth. That is a playoff game. That is that is the fifth playoff game of the year, or the, you know, whatever, however you yeah, want to you describe it's it. It's going to be hard to, to be. it's going to be hard to explain Clemson beating Notre Dame to Notre Dame five Texas A and M. Yeah. And, and, and where where do they? Yeah, yeah. I, I just I don't see. I mean, this is going to be. I, I don't know. I, I don't know how you can say that a team loses, even even if you draw up a scenario where okay, Notre Dame wins by by one point on a fluky play or whatever. Okay, but they still beat Clemson twice and then flip it around. If Clemson, oh, Clemson's out because it's two losses. Uh, yeah. I think the argument arises when you have the one loss Notre Dame. Yeah, but you have a one loss in Notre Dame, but you lo- you just lost to Clemson, and, and if you get in, you're going to play Clemson again. So I, I think you're out. I don't know. I, I get what you're saying. That's just kind of where I'm standing on it. Uh, any other games that you want to talk about this week? Because I think we kind of no, we, I mean, we disagree. All, all all, but no, we we don't disagree. I just the committee the the formula they have put out there to the public is that they will put in the best teams, technically regardless of losses. I don't believe that. Mm-hmm. I don't believe that one bit. I think two losses means you're out because I think Florida is better than Texas A and M. Florida is better than Notre Dame. Texas A&M beat Florida. I think it's just one of those games in college football where sometimes it doesn't fall your way. You lose, you lose. But the way that the offense is presented with Kyle Trask in Florida, Heisman winner, by the way. I'll, mm-hmm. I'll just go ahead and say that. I still think he's getting the Heisman. Uh, Bavada has Mac Jones as the favorite for that. I, I'm good. I'm good on that. Um, yeah, Alabama, Ohio State, Clemson, Texas A&M. Run it. Fair enough. All right, let's. That, that's I, I absolutely get what you're saying, and I agree with you. Uh, let's move on to the last little topic we want to talk about. Then we'll, we'll head out. So, according to Bavada, the Alabama is the favorite to win the national championship at, at minus one fifty. Uh, Clemson comes in second at plus two seventy five. Uh, Ohio State third at plus three uh, three fifty. Notre Dame at plus seven hundred. Uh, Texas A and M at thirty five hundred. Florida sixty six hundred. And beyond that, you know, gets gets a little it's crazy. Not happening, yeah. Uh, yeah so so of those six games uh, six teams that I played and considering the fact that you're you're taking negative odds obviously if you bet on Alabama who would you bet on here to you know sitting here on the 15th before the uh, the playoffs have even really been uh, decided officially who are you betting on? yeah uh, let me give you an argument for like my my fab four I guess it'll be real quick Alabama they are the most dominant team they are the 1a and then there's a gap between anyone else there mm-hmm. Minus 150, go ahead. I, I really think that Alabama is going to get it this year with the dominance that they've so too. played. Clemson, I would bet on Clemson solely based on the fact that Dabo and Nick Saban have this rivalry going back and forth, back and forth. You can't cut out Trevor Lawrence in that offense. Ohio State, we've seen minimal on you, so there might be minimal to play against you. And you have elite talent across the board in Chris o- Olav, uh, the receiver, Justin Fields. You have Sean Wade mm-hmm. on defense. There's a lot of big names that are going to be we're going to be seeing in this in this draft upcoming. Yeah. You never know what can happen. And my last one, Texas A&M at plus 3,500 odds. I, I, know, I know I shat on you guys. I know I said that I don't think you... Listen, you maneuver this SEC schedule in a COVID year very well. Kellen Mond, when you show up and play the games that you were supposed to be playing since day one at A&M, you're almost unbeatable. The running back in Spiller and the offensive line... Probably one of the best okay. offensive lines I love lines that in running back, man. I, I really do. He, he, they're, yeah. they're tough, man. They're a really good team. And if they are fortunate enough to have someone beat Bama, because I think that's what it would take. Uh, it would take. Well, they're going to be. They're going to be that four spot. So they have to be Bama. Most likely they would have to go through Bama. But yeah. for five bucks to, to put it on plus 3,500 odds, that's where it helps you out. Yeah. And by the way, five bucks will win you one hundred seventy-five bucks. Seventy-five dollars. Yeah. So you have you have a you know you you have bigger pockets than us if you have an extra fifty dollars lying around. But if you have an extra fifty dollars lying around, it's the seventeen hundred fifty dollars to you know on a fifty dollars. That, is a, that risk. is a massive turnaround. <laughs> at the end of the day, you got to look at it as this is a one through four thing. Regardless of names, a one through four is going to win it. 
and you yeah. have one that has plus 3,500 odds. Yeah. So you heard the man go on to Bovada, bet on, uh, bet on Texas A&M. That's a great, that's, what do you that's think? an awesome, I absolutely agree. I take Texas A&M. I think Clemson is probably the, the most reasonable bet, but you, you know, you, if you bet say 20 bucks, you, you could win 55. Uh, again, Clemson still has to go through Notre Dame and you, we can say what we want about it. I do think they win that game, but it'll be a tough game. They have three playoff games. I, I, I would, I would look at Clemson that way. They have three playoff games. Yeah. Again, a lot Alabama, of pressure. Alabama's the number one. I I won't bet on Alabama only because I feel like I already have a fifty dollar bet on Alabama. Of course, because you have Clemson, Ohio State, and Alabama is really my only chance there. I I think realistically, but I agree. Yeah, I, th- I, th- I think you have the favorite odds. Yeah, and I think I probably am going to put five bucks on Texas A&M just to have fun with it. And you know, maybe yeah. maybe it hits. Maybe I win hundred seventy five bucks. I won't be mad at that. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. That is it for us at Between the Pylons, guys. We are on a new channel. We are on the uh, the the underdog uh, YouTube video or YouTube channel as well as their uh, as their podcast network we want to thank underdog so much for for putting us on and, and if you were listening to us on the underdog network hey uh, if you don't mind co- come over to the between the pylons youtube channel and subscribe to that come over to uh you know listen to us on on our podcast uh you know we we on youtube especially we put out a lot of draft profiles and stuff like that we we are constantly putting out football content so that is uh, i feel like definitely a, a channel to follow if you're interested in that I have talked too much. Thank you so much for watching, guys. guys. Peace out.